Hey everyone, today we're taking a look at MSI Afterburner 4.4.0 Beta 11. This is the newest release by Unwinder and it was just released on 622. He just posted it uh, not long ago on the Guru 3D forums and he made a couple of changes to the OSD. Uh, now he's implemented some graphs and some uh, alternative uh, fonts, I guess you could say, or look to the OSD in general. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to already have it running. I have uh, Unigen Heaven running in the background and I got it capped over here with RTSS over at just at 30 frames per second to keep the fan noise down and the card not running hot. But regardless, let's jump into the settings and let's take a look and see what's changed. So we jump into the monitoring tab and the first thing I noticed skipping right to it was at the very bottom I see an option for CPU clock so now you can monitor your CPU clock speeds all the individual cores or just the overall clock speeds um, also has a, color, a couple other options I noticed here we can take a look at um, uh, that's been added as to I think the temp limit was added and the power limit for the CPU was added as well I think but I'm not hundred percent sure but I do have this uh, this checked and in, in, in marked in my OSD and it's right here on the upper left for my 5820K. It's clocked at 4 gigahertz. Temperature is 61C and it's 11% usage. So that was, was added. That wasn't there before, before this beta. So um, that's nice to have to know what your CPU clock speeds are. And let's jump down here. Let's go ahead and select uh, frame rate. So we have frame rate all the way at the top. You can move, you can change the um, the, uh, if, if you want frame it all in the top, all the way in the top, you can just basically bring it all the way to the top, and it'll be the very first line. If you want it to be the second line, you can just move it down to the second line, if you wanted to, and then hit apply. For now, we'll keep it up top. Anyways, let's got frame rate. So let's scroll down here, and you'll notice it says on-screen display layout. It says classic. We're gonna get to this in a minute, and then the next thing we got down is show on dis show in on-screen display. Right now, it just says text. And then it also says graph. So if we select graph and hit OK, it takes the frame rate and it moves it down here and it displays a graph. So we have a solid line of just 30 frames per second. If I was to disable the frame rate limit, we'll see some jumps here. We'll, we see some spikes. It goes to 122 up to 175 and it's showing a lot of variance here of um, frame rate so that's kind of what it will look like if you were using it during a benchmark or gameplay or something along those lines so if we want to um, I'm gonna slow it back down if we want to display the text and graph we go down here and just hit text and graph hit OK and now we have it listed still at the top but then we also have the graph down here as well so it just shows you um, just a, an, an overview and some history of what the frame rate was. Um, and you can essentially do that for all of the items you have selected. So if I want to do it for GPU temperature, I just go back down here and select text and graph, hit OK. And then it would show me another graph right here below of the temperature and show me when it spiked and when it, and when it um, went down, essentially just mimicking what you see here on the, uh, on the display below the after, afterburner. Uh, the uh, the UI, so it's just taking this information and just displaying it on the on-screen display. So it's pretty nice. Um, I do like that a lot. However, the thing that I like the most, let's go back here into monitoring and let's take a look at what I was talking about beforehand. We have on-screen on-screen display layout. Right now it's set to classic, and we can set it to modern, and hit OK. And what that does, it it gives it a more modern look. Um, looks like it's all color coordinated coordinated as well. So Intel processor is blue, NVIDIA GPU is green. If you had an AMD system, I'm assuming both uh, with AMD video card and AMD CPU, both would be red. DX11 uh, is up here in red. But now it adds a slightly, it adds Celsius, it adds voltage, it adds megahertz, megabytes. Um, it looks a bit more professional. I think a little bit easier to read and determine what you're looking at, especially if you're showing gameplay videos or something like that. Uh, an average viewer can can look at it and be like, oh, okay, and not have to second guess. Um, takes up a little bit more real estate, but it still looks very good. 
So that's the option for, uh, let's see here, the modern setting. If we want to go to modern mono, select that, and essentially just, it's everything is the same color that you selected down here for your Rivatune or OSD. So you can always go to pink and set everything to pink, and then everything's in lovely pink. Um, if you want to change the font, you go over here to the raster 3D, there's a little arrow, click on that. And you can change the font to whatever you want. You can upload your own fonts, whatever, whatever you like. So, um, so this is what I have and what I like. And this is kind of in a nutshell. I'm sure there's going to be an official uh, launch of Afterburner with everything in line. But so far, this is what the revision. Um, it's not been officially uploaded to Guru 3D as of yet. I'm sure it will um, in the coming days or coming weeks. But I am a big fan of the new design and layout by adding the graphs but my favorite thing personally is the uh, the modern setting on the on-screen display so I do like that a lot so there might be some other changes I missed I apologize if I did but just want to throw this video out really quick and let you guys see what the changes are and I hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions feel free to let me know thanks a lot bye